transitioning with WordPress, uh, how to create welcoming communities in WordPress. Uh, thankfully, everybody seems really chill here today, so I'm gonna not have to be all grumpy at the beginning and potentially kick people out. So ignore this. Instead, I will tell you a story. Um, I don't know exactly where this story comes from, uh, but I've seen it enough times on the internet, and even if it's not like real life true, I still think it's valid. Man is visiting uh, New York City. He sits down at a dive bar, just looking to kind of escape. And while he's sitting there drinking, another man comes in, looks kind of like, not dissimilar to me, but wearing like a punk rock vest, a bunch of different symbols he doesn't recognize. And immediately the bartender goes, no, get out to the man. And the guy goes, okay, no problem. Walks out, doesn't want to cause any trouble. And it seems weird to this guy sitting in the bar, like, why are you, why are you kicking this guy out? He hadn't, he hadn't said anything, he hadn't done anything. He said, well, you didn't see his jacket. You didn't see the symbols, and I, I did. I've been at places like this, and this is how it starts. Guy comes in, seemingly very friendly to everyone. Everything seems really chill. But he's got a couple symbols that relate to uh, the Nazi regime. And some of them are a little more subtle, you know, it's not gonna be open swastikas, that sort of thing. It's gonna be more like the hidden meanings that those in the know understand what those symbols mean. And it's a signal that this place is safe. And so that guy will then probably bring a friend. And that guy will also seem pretty chill and be friendly and is like making friends with people. And oh no, see, we're just normal people. We just have different views. But then more, and more of them come in. And then all of a sudden one day you realize you're the bartender at the Nazi bar. So that should give you a general idea of something I'm gonna talk about later, but I wanna plant that seed now. The key to all of this is the true path to tolerance, is that you have to be intolerant of intolerance. So a little bit about myself. I've been a WordPress developer since 2013. I uh, got started as a career change and it just kind of stuck. I went freelance in 2015 and I bounced around, done some freelance, went back to agency, back and forth. Um, I'm now a codable expert, have been for about a year. Um, I'm a mom to three kids, two dogs, two cats, a partridge in a pear tree, and um, I'm pretty sure one of my daughters is gonna insist on getting an axolotl at some point sometime soon. Uh, I'm also a YouTuber, which is why my wife is currently filming me. <laughs> uh, hopefully the sound is good because I really want to use it. And uh, as the opening of my talk can suggest, I'm kind of a troublemaker. Uh, I've been a WordPress or a WordCamp organizer um, and had to resign twice in the span of what, six months, David? Was it six months? <laughs> there were issues. Um, and it's mostly because I don't, tolerate BS. Um, I'm going to tell that story as part of the talk, though, so I won't spoil it now. Um, I've also been transitioning since 2021 this time, and we'll talk about that later, too. So how did WordPress make my transition easier? The great thing, as you've already seen here, is WordPress is a very open, free community. There is no barrier to entry with WordPress. The software itself is free, and while WordPress and like building with WordPress is not 100% free because you know you got to pay for servers that sort of thing, it's a very low barrier to entry. And if you have access to even something like WordPress.com, it is free on certain plans. There are local WordCamps, there are regional WordCamps uh, such as like WordCamp US, and then there are also international ones, WordCamp Europe. In it, um, there have been WordCamp Asia's. I know that's been difficult because of COVID and all of that. And for the most part, people are pretty open-minded. They're willing to listen. It's not always the case, but for the most part. And there is a long-standing support for members of the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, pretty much from the very beginning, queer people have been part of WordPress. And so acceptance of queer people has been baked into the culture from the very beginning. So this is not my first rodeo. As I mentioned, um, I previously, in about 2017, uh, tried to transition, and it did not go as well. Uh, it wasn't, though, because of WordPress. 
WordPress was the thing that made it good. My talk in 2017, WordCamp Miami, uh, if you, I'll, I'll say it here. My dead name is Adam, so if you've heard of Adam Susi, that's, that's still me. Um, and this was actually at WordCamp Miami, I, though I think this was 2019. Um, I, that was pretty much my coming out party for uh, my first attempt at transition. Um, and if you find my talk from the WordCamp Miami 2017 on WordPress.tv, you can see what I looked like. And everyone was amazing. I had a few friends that didn't know it was coming because I had talked to a few people, like giving them a heads up to just get their, you know, what do you, how do you think this is going to go? And uh, so I did surprise some people, but the basic question was like, oh, what's this about? And I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm trans, I'm transitioning. Like, oh, cool. And, you know, we moved on with the conversation. It was that quick. There was no, like, you know, let's talk about your surgeries and all of that that I get online all the time. Unfortunately, my family support, specifically my first marriage, didn't go so well. And that's kind of why I took a break and tried to go back to being cis. And it just, <laughs> it didn't take. Um, so I tried again. And because of my negative experience with my family, I was worried. But I, and I didn't know how things were going to go with work because I knew, well, WordPress as a community is cool, but not everybody within the community can be. It's a, it's, you still have to go on a case-by-case -case basis. But thankfully, um, I was doing, even though I was freelance, I was doing a lot of agency work with one specific agency. So I, and I was on their team page. So I was like, hey, I'm going to start transitioning. I have a new name. They're like, yeah, no problem. Give us a new name. Give us a picture, which I didn't even have a photo yet, so, and I, I just had an illustration. So I used that as my team photo, and they were totally cool with that. Like everybody else was like, you know, a nice professional picture, and then you have this. And I was like, they're like, yeah, no, it's no problem. You don't have a picture. It's no big deal. So social, social media support within the WordPress community was fantastic. Um, and it really, I was starting the social transition first because the first time, because I had issues with social transition before I started medical transition, I was, I was afraid to start it and stop it again. But the response of the community was what made me feel safe. And it's why I was able to start HRT a few months later and really feel confident that this was the path forward for the rest of my life. And it's that safety and that community support that made it happen. It also helped that I'd been through it a little bit. I'd gone through this, the process of openly transitioning, being public in a space where I didn't know most of the people. Like I had you know, some people that I knew, but not everybody. And everyone was really chill. I was never confronted. There were no issues with, you know, and this was happening in Miami, in the bathroom, in Florida, and there were no issues. A few weeks later when I went to WordCamp Orlando, which is where kind of my home base anyway, and I was an organizer, there were still no issues. And it was like, OK, this is pretty chill. So I thought, like, yeah, I can do this. I'm, I'm going to be totally fine. But what if I didn't feel safe? So I mentioned, and I wasn't going to put a picture of that guy, so that's the best you get. Um, <laughs> I resigned twice from my position as an organizer within WordPress Orlando. Uh, the first was over politics, but not in the way you would think. Um, there was just some concerns over whether or not having an elected official of any kind was acceptable, because we had booked it as our keynote speaker, and then there was this whole thing. And a bunch of us kind of basically resigned in protest when she was kind of unceremoniously removed from the schedule entirely without telling us. And there was a whole thing. and it. It's in the past, it's been resolved, but that's why I resigned the first time. The next, for the next organizing cycle, I was the co-lead organizer. And around that time, this is pre-January 6th, um, you know, even pre-election, this was pre-COVID technically, um, there was a, a public discussion about whether or not we should allow people wearing red Make America Great Again hats at WordCamps. Because there is kind of a general, like, you know, we don't kind of talk about politics 
but it was more of a like they want to be able to wear the hat and it, like they can't say anything about it, but they just want to be able to wear the hat. I had conversations uh, specifically with people of color within my community, within my organizing committee. And I said, how do you guys feel about this? At the, and at the time, I was a cis-presenting, male-presenting person. And I'm obviously white. And so I said, I know that my job as an ally is to be, and especially in my position as a co-lead organizer, I need to be the one that takes the stand. You don't have to put yourself out there. I will. I did not expect it to go as poorly as it did, um, but they, they had told me openly, we view this as a hate symbol. It makes us uncomfortable just seeing someone walk into a room wearing that hat, it makes us feel unsafe. And as a queer person, I felt that, so I understood. And I made a very public statement once the conversation started going, and I said, in my capacity as an organizer, I'll do everything my, I can to ban MAGA hats from WordCamps, at least, at least WordCamp Orlando, it's not welcome. Very quickly, my fellow quo, quo organizer um, had to issue a statement that that was not the official statement of WordCamp Orlando and that I was doing that on my own. And then I became one of the features of a, uh, a long article on the topic on WP Tavern and basically was made an example of, and while these words were not used, what, in more common vernacular, I was basically the woke ideology being pushed on WordPress. And I got eviscerated so poorly in the comments that it became, the story became more, and the conversation was more about me and other people that were also taking a stand to the point where I had no other choice but to resign and stop being the story. And interestingly enough, the story went away not too long after I resigned. So it kind of had the right effect, at least for as I was concerned. And then COVID happened and made all of it irrelevant anyway. Um, but as a result, I kind of walked away from the WordPress community. And it made me, because that safety that I had felt was gone. And I knew other queer people felt that way too. And to make matters worse now, you know, we're... <laughs> It's interesting, being in Georgia, I feel so much safer than being in my home state. Even though Georgia is more, is known for conservative politics. You know, I live in the national hellscape that is Florida. Um, and even though I live in the Disney Orlando bubble, uh, I used to drive back and forth to work in through Polk County, which if you've heard of Sheriff Grady Judd, you know why I'd be a little bit concerned. Um, it is technically illegal for me to use certain bathrooms in my home state. Uh, and as an organizer and for a WordCamp, like this is, this is a state university, I believe. Um, it's, it's not a private school. So, uh, so if this was Florida, I would have to use the men's room because if I'm on public property, I can't use the women's restroom. I have to use the one that I was assigned at birth. That's a huge issue and a huge safety concern. Um, especially because like this is, most word camps happen on the weekends, but sometimes it's a public, you know, there are other students. When we were at word camp Miami, there were students walking around all the time. That would have been a huge problem for me. So here's what we have to do. Step one, establish a code of conduct. Um, obviously local laws apply here, um, but that means you have to choose a safe venue, which means as a WordCamp organizer in the state of Florida right now, if you want to be inclusive to trans people, gen gender non-conforming people, you cannot hold your events in a public-owned facility. You just can't. It's not safe. And you have to establish a code of conduct. Um, I believe Mike... I'm not butcher his last name, Demopolis. Did I say that right? Close enough. Everybody calls him Demo. If you know Demo, you know who I'm talking about. Um, he's been working on a code of conduct, and he released the first version, I believe it was for WordCamp US? This... Uh, I know you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the first time it was really tested was WordCamp US. Um, and it's just a very queer, inclusive uh, version. Um, but most importantly, be intolerant of intolerance. Do not allow the hateful views to take hold. 
because once that seed is planted in even one person, it can grow and it will spread faster than COVID ever will. So I kind of told the story, but let's open up the floor for questions. Bueller. I'm not that scary, I promise. I'm really nice. I was going to say, yeah, Dave and I literally meet every week. So, any questions at all? Yep. Um, so, in Florida, I know currently has really strict mm -hmm. laws. Are there any other states that are similarly strict around laws? So, the question is are there any other states like Florida uh, that have similar anti trans laws? Yes and no. Not nearly to the extent that Florida has gone. Um, Famously, in North Carolina, they did try in 2016 with HB2, the first of like the bathroom bills. Um, the interesting thing, and it's, you know, that's, that's a great segue. The funny thing about the changing political climate is in 2016, it was one state that tried it, and there was massive outrage from pretty much every level of society. Even within conservative po political circles, they were like, this feels like a bit much and this could be bad. And everybody basically listened and North Carolina withdrew that. But as we've seen the growing changes within this country, more and more states are trying again. And they're trying in different ways. Um, we could have a whole discussion about like the politics behind this that aren't necessarily relevant, but no one's gone as far as Florida has, but the next legislative session isn't that far away. And because there has not been a successful legal challenge to this bill in Florida, there it's likely that we will see other states follow suit. So, because that's the other thing is like people see, oh, it's Florida, it's weird, you know, DeSantis and all of that. It, it, this, is not a, this is not a one person thing. This is a concerned movement to eradicate gender nonconforming people from society. Quite frankly, it's, uh, I'll, I'll stop short of using a term I usually use on social media, but that is, that is what is happening. Uh, yes. Um, going back to your story in Miami where mm -hmm. you were the co-organizer and all of that, mm -hmm. um, and please excuse my ignorance, but why wasn't there some type of board or you know, why didn't a sponsor step in during that time when we were basically being, you know, publicly humiliated. Over. So that's an excellent question. Basically, it was why wasn't there someone that stepped in, you know, as an oversight into uh, when I was basically being lambasted by the community? Um, I think if it had happened more of as like a like a social media thing, it would have been one thing. But WP Tavern is effectively the like they are owned by WordPress.com, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. It, it, it's a hazy relationship at best. But they are essentially the voice of, word, the journalistic voice of the WordPress community. And at the time, the person that was editing and specifically the person that wrote the article um, has conservative political views. And he used his editorial control to basically humiliate me. Um, I'm not going to name his name, but it happened. Thank you. Um, but it, 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 is, it is really interesting that we've seen a shift uh, because that was, that was before a lot of you know, the anti-trans laws, anything like my being trans had nothing to do with it. It was just a question of politics. And the reason I, I bring this up is because I know not everybody pays attention to all the, the different drama that happens on social media, and good for you if you're able to avoid it. Leading into WordCamp US, um, every year for at least the last few years at WordCamp US, there's been a pride party. It's one of several parties that happens at, at WordCamp US. Um, it's obviously in no way mandatory. It's just, you know, here's a space for queer people to be safe and, you know, celebrate each other. It was marked as one of the official parties on the schedule this year. And, and oh, it wasn't even on the official schedule? Okay. Yeah, there, there was a, there, 
some people got the impression that there was. Yeah, just to clarify, it's a private company sponsoring a private party, but they book space in the same venue. Yeah, so a private company holding a private party that just happened to be related to the LGBTQ plus community, and one of the attendees decided to make, make a big stink about it. Why do we need to have this? Is this really necessary? Um, and started making all these claims that it was an officially sponsored event and that it was on official publications and all of that. And it was like, none of that was true, but it very quickly blew up and it, it became, it was like, well, I'm just asking questions. Why does this need to happen? As a queer person who's maybe not out yet, but wants to start finding that safe place and that sense of community that gives them the courage to be their full selves. How do you think that made them feel? If I, I remember going to work, the first WordCamp US in 2015, that's where I came out as trans to a lot of people, privately, well before I ever attempted transition. And it's where I met some trans people in the, because it was, I had a conversation, quite frankly, with David here in this room, and he said, oh, I need to introduce you to someone. And I've been friends with that person ever since. Like, that's how the queer community has always operated. It's like, once you're in, it's like, oh, well, let's introduce you to all of the other people that you need to know. And it's very inclusive, and it makes you feel safe. And that's what WordPress's ethos has always been. Democratize publishing, bring people in, and give them the tools to be themselves. But we can't do that if we're sending a message that also says, okay, all of these people that are gonna make this one segment of people feel unsafe, no, they're welcome too. And you can use, but you know, it, we have to be welcoming of everyone. You don't. You can't be welcome to hate because hate grows. Because in the same way that like, David introduced me to an, a, a trans woman that I had never met, and now we're friends. Maybe somebody sees a red hat and is like, well, I kind of think that guy is cool too. Let's talk. You know, and then flash forward a couple of years, you know, because this was pre then. Flash forward a couple of years and we see both of them on the news on January 6th. Like, you know, it's, you have to be careful who you let in the door. Um, there's a rule with vampires. They have to ask permission to come in. If you let the wrong one in, you get eaten. And maybe we shouldn't let our community get eaten. Yes. I'm fine because I'm going to ask a question that I don't think answer. Okay. Some spaces, mm -hmm. for instance, work camps have further responsibilities such as legal requirements based on the type of entities or the locations being held, for mm -hmm. instance, the universities uh, on um, whom they can and can charge. Yes. Uh, do you think that there, do you have any thoughts or ideas on how that can be addressed? As in, you know, people who perhaps we as a community yeah. might acknowledge uh, would really enjoy being themselves here. Um, yeah. But, you know, but we can't say you shouldn't come. I completely understand that. Um, basically, the, essentially, the question is word camps. Uh, have a potentially a legal responsibility to not basically be discriminatory, effectively. Exactly. Um, what we can do is have a very clear and well-established code of conduct that in the event that you violate the code of conduct, you are no longer welcome. Which means, like, you with your very specific political views or your, quite frankly, hateful views are welcome to come and learn but if you intimidate, threaten, make comments that make someone else feel unsafe, that sort of thing, you are no longer welcome here. And that is the, kind of the difference. It's like, and that's why we say, like, you, the person, can come in. What you can't bring with you is your giant flashing red, uh, red flag, literally a red hat in the, in the argument here, that makes those, because by that action, you are making people feel unsafe and therefore violating the code of conduct. Yes. 
So prior to WordCamp US this year, a code of conduct did not exist at all? Not, not true. Basically, the, the code of conduct I'm talking about was, um, so the question being, did that code of conduct exist prior to WordCamp, this year, WordCamp US? And yes, it did. It was revised to be more specifically welcoming to queer people and to protect them. It, it was more, it was the work that's been being done by the community as a whole, in part led by Demo. Um, he was the one that helped really kind of push it to the forefront uh, towards the end and like make sure it got in place. Because obviously with, as we're experiencing now throughout the, the country, it's, it, it, we needed to take a stand. And so he did. And he wasn't the only one that did it. It's just, he's the one I know for sure was involved. So, any other questions? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Basically, her comment, you know, we can't block people from being here, but they have to abide by the rules. And it, it is really that simple. To use an example from my real life that has nothing to do with WordPress, Disney World doesn't, you know, <laughs> Disney World wants everybody to come in. Trust me, I, I, I go there all the time and I see amazing, amazing things that you wouldn't expect people to wear in public. But if somebody complains about a shirt that you're wearing, whether it's liberal, conservative, or otherwise, Disney will and has asked you to remove it because it's within their rules that you can't make people feel uncomfortable. Um, the ones that make the news are, act are typically actually on the opposite side of this, which is um, people wearing shirts that directly quote the US Constitution, specifically some references to Native Americans, and it was Native American activists wearing them at Disney that conservatives in the park saw the shirt and said, hey, this we don't like this, this is making me feel uncomfortable, and Disney security gave the people two choices, leave, or go to the, you know, one of the gift shops, buy a new shirt and change. So in the same way, like they're not discriminating, but they're saying we have rules here and we will enforce them. So it's a lot of it comes down to having that strong rule set and in being willing to enforce it. Um, I know we had an issue, I think it was in 2015 at WordCamp Orlando, where somebody was making political comments like it was even like during like the hallway chats or something, people were just talking and it was making someone uncomfortable and we didn't even find out about it until, yeah, afterwards because they reported it to WordCamp Central. They didn't, because there wasn't, you know, these code of conducts weren't quite in, as in place as they were, they are now. And then as a result, when we were planning 2016, they're like, well, the first thing we have to talk about is this incident that happened last year. And we, most of us were like, what? What incident? Because that, they didn't, there wasn't a procedure in place, and that's why procedures are now in place for this. So sometimes it takes an incident to create the system. So let's create the system first so that we can avoid the incidents. Okay, anything else? All right. I am at Trans Cinderella on most socials, as well as uh, my website is actually live. I managed to get it up today after I got here. Um, and that's my email if you have questions as well. Um, but as far as socials, I'm on YouTube, Instagram, and Blue Sky. Uh, I am not, I am technically on Twitter, but please don't bug me there. I try not to log in. It's a bad place for me, so. All right, thank you. Thank you.